can have the right strategy, one can have the right technology, one can have a technology deployment plan. But unless you have the right culture in place, it sometimes um, is hard to deploy strategy or technology. And the culture can accelerate transformations through strategy or technology, but it also stymie. So it's a place where we are hiring all engineering talent, mechanical, chemical, civil, structural engineers to solve problems that are meaningful, impactful and cutting edge. These are not transactional or back office type of uh, work. These are real problems that uh, help deliver technology solutions that will deliver affordable, reliable and ever clean energy to this growing world. Hello and thank you for tuning into GCC Unplugged, where uh, real leaders share raw insights. I am Saurav Kumar, Consulting Editor with the Economic Times and the host for this podcast. As the world races towards a low carbon future, global energy giants are reinventing uh, themselves through technology, talent and innovation. Chevron has just made one of its boldest bets yet launching Engine Center in Bangalore, a billion dollar investment that will anchor its global digital and engineering capabilities. And leading that is Dr. Akshay Shani, who's with me here today. Thank you, Akshay, for joining us. Thank you, Saurav. Nice to be here today. Um, it's a pleasure to have you. Uh, first of all, about Engine, I just mentioned a billion dollar bet. That's huge. Tell us about it. Yeah, the Engine stands for Engineering and Innovation Excellence Center a state-of-the-art technology hub to support uh, Chevron's global projects and operations. So it's a place where we are hiring all engineering talent, mechanical, chemical, civil, structural engineers to solve problems that are meaningful, impactful, and cutting edge. These are not transactional or back office type of uh, work. These are real problems that uh, help deliver technology solutions that will deliver affordable, reliable, and ever clean energy to this growing world. Mm, nice. And uh, you, you, your journey spans you know, uh, across continents and discipline. Uh, tell us about it and you know, what are the experiences that you are bringing into this uh, uh, Chevron's India operations? Yes, yeah, sort of. So I grew up in Chandigarh. Uh, that's where I studied uh, from my uh, middle school, high school, and college. I went to Punjab Engineering College for my mechanical engineering degree. In 92, uh, I left um, for the US to actually Alaska for my master's degree. And after my master's degree, I went to Stanford for my PhD. And I was hired by Chevron from Stanford campus in 98. So I've been with one company um, for 27 years That's now. That's a lot of time. That's a lot of time. I work with Chevron around the world. And I'm Delighted to be back in India um, as the country head of Chevron India. I came back last year, so 34 years, um, uh, you know, since I come back, um, and it's been um, remarkable to see how India has progressed over the last several years. And many of the learnings um, uh, that I had from growing up in Chandigarh uh, on the cricket fields in Chandigarh, uh, I've taken them to heart and applied them. Here at the engine. Yeah, you're fond of cricket. Uh, you told me about the Asia Cup match, uh, uh, which is going to happen, and you don't, you don't want to miss it. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you you've led diverse engineering teams across uh, places like Venezuela, China, Kazakhstan, Thailand, California, and many more. Uh, uh, what you know, unique challenges and probably learnings uh, have you prepared? You know, you have most which which are bought into India and which you think will be really helpful in uh, setting up your Bangalore center? I had the opportunity to work in many places around the world, uh, the countries that you mentioned, and of course, many locations in the US as well. And one of the things that has always stood out for me is uh, building the right culture. One can have the right strategy, one can have the right technology, one can have a technology deployment plan, but unless you have the right culture in place, it sometimes um, is hard to deploy strategy or technology. And the culture can accelerate 
transformations through strategy and technology, but it also stymie uh, the technology transformations. So my focus is on building a culture that is collaborative. Uh, it is connected and close-knit at the engine, um, where people feel valued and respected and uh, inspired to innovate. Yeah, I know that's a, uh, that's a big problem. Just a couple of days back, I was speaking to a GCC leader, and she told me that, you know, what I write is my most polite language, but in some countries, that's not considered polite. I mean, in you know, in that country, China, uh, you know, they think that I'm rude, but I'm not. I'm actually being very polite. So, putting that all together is very important. Uh, so, what I want to ask you next is that what, what, what was the key uh, ingredients of India that really attracted Chevron to make this bet here in India? Yeah. So, as I mentioned previously, we are looking at all types of STEM talent, and there aren't too many places in the world where you can get high quality STEM talent at scale. The problems that we are solving at the Chevron engine, um, they don't typically come with an instruction manual. Uh, they require systems level thinking, they require collaboration across functions, and that type of talent, uh, the high end uh, engineering talent, IT talent, uh, AI and data science talent is available. And we had some good experiences working with third party engineering companies uh, and IT companies for a number of years in India. So when we decided to set up the engine, um, India was an obvious choice. Mm, okay. So, you know, you also talked about that, you know, just mentioned that, you know, uh, uh, it's not just a back office, you know, it's a sort of a high end innovation uh, hub. and. Uh, so how do you envision uh, the role of this center in this, you know, 146 year old company, as you mentioned, uh, you know, before even the uh, first flight was uh, taken off where they have been operation. So how do you think that what your uh, center can uh, provide in terms of innovation, especially in the energy transformation era, era right now? Yes, well, um you're right. Uh, Chevron was incorporated in 1879. Uh, that's before uh, Carl Benz filed the patent for the automobile, uh, before Wright Brothers uh, flew the first aeroplane. And we've been through multiple energy transitions um, since then. Um, one thing that has stood firm is our commitment to deliver affordable, reliable, and ever cleaner energy. And our strategy is to safely deliver low carbon energy uh, to a uh, going world. So the work that we are bringing to the engine is work that is scalable across multiple Chevron locations. We are a big company. We are in multiple different geographies. Um, if we can centralize and standardize some of the technical work that happens in boutique ways in multiple locations and bring that work to the engine, we can deploy technology solutions at a much faster pace we can be a lot more consistent and disciplined in execution of technology solutions. And that's one of the primary goals uh, for Chevron uh, to utilize the engine here in Bengaluru. Yeah, that, that's great. Yes, I mean, the number of STEM graduates we produce every year is mind boggling. And probably if you need 5,000 people at one go, India is the place probably in anywhere in the world if you uh, compare it with. So, uh, and with that, you have big hiring plans in India, I guess. So, uh, tell us about it and what, what, what talent profile are you going to look at? Because you have a very specific, uh, you know, area where you, the talent is required. And uh, how will, you know, diversity, inclusion, what would be your in recruitment strategy here? The recruitment strategy depends on the type of talent we seek and the type of talent ecosystem we want to build across the people that we are hiring. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, the problems that we are solving are not transactional. They are high-end um, technology problem sets. Uh, the work we're doing is meaningful, it's impactful, it's cutting edge. So we want people who we hire to be curious, uh, to have the growth mindset, who can collaborate cross-functionally. So that is the type of talent we are bringing in. But it's not just about hiring talent, it's putting a 
ecosystem around them so that the talent can get onboarded, nurtured, and developed. Um, so we have mentors for each and every employee that is coming in. We have structured training programs for many of our uh, early career employees. And we give our employees an immersive experience by utilizing digital twins of the facilities that they are supporting around the world. So if an engineer walks in um, into one of our offices here in, in India, they are actually walking into a facility around the world where they are providing the technical support or developing a technology solution. So it's the entire ecosystem of developing talent and onboarding talent that we're building here at the engine. Mm. That must be fascinating. Oh, you enter into a place where, you know, tell us about the digital twin part of your uh, uh, center. How does it work? How does it look? And what, what really it helps in achieving? Yeah, so digital twins um, are a big enabler for uh, remote operations. Not everyone can be at a LNG plant, a liquefied natural gas plant where we are um, chilling natural gas to minus 160 degrees centigrade before it's shipped to customers. Um, uh, not everyone can be on an offshore production facility where we are drilling and producing at depths of 34,000 feet below sea level. Uh, 34,000 feet is uh, deeper than the height of Mount Everest. So we have digital twins of those facilities, of those operations, so that the engineers who are working on problem sets uh, to support operations, to drive new technology solutions, get an immersive uh, experience. Uh, if they're writing an engineering work order, trying to figure out how to improve the reliability of a machine that sits offshore in the Gulf of America or at a LNG plant in uh, Australia, they can do it uh, sitting in their office in Bangalore uh, with the facility uh, on their screens. Mm, right. And that must be so good for uh, people who are working for you because that's a kind of exposure they otherwise would not kind of get. So the learnings that they will have, uh, that doesn't stop there. I mean, they can you know take it outside and they can be uh, really good workers for others as well. Yes, that's where um, talent meets purpose. And we are not just bringing the technology uh, solutions to India. We're also bringing Chevron's global expertise. We have um, multiple subject matter experts, um, leaders from around Chevron's operations who are helping stand up the engine, who are mentoring many of our young engineers who are joining from different companies uh, here uh, in India. And they're helping build that talent ecosystem uh, to provide the energy that the world needs. Mm, right. And talking about energy, you know, uh, we need cheaper, we need uh, cleaner energy solutions. Uh, so how integral is going to be this center uh, towards achieving this sustainability uh, roadmap, especially around, you know, carbon uh, capture, low carbon technologies or operational reliability maybe for that matter? Yeah. You know, uh, energy trilemma, as you mentioned, is one of the biggest challenges for uh, every uh, country, for big companies like us. You know, the energy needs to be affordable. Uh, that drives um, human progress, human prosperity. Energy needs to be reliable, and that drives uh, energy security. That's very important for every country, including large countries with growing populations like India. And then the world needs clean energy. And uh, the technology solutions that we develop at the engine address all of that. Uh, we believe that the future is lower carbon, but we also believe that the future will require uh, multiple diverse sources of energy. And at least for the foreseeable future, um, uh, oil and gas, uh, low carbon oil and gas is going to remain part of that energy mix while we develop technology solutions for carbon capture, utilization, and storage. Uh, low carbon hydrogen, as well as renewable fuels, and we're working some of those problems uh, uh, at the engine. Mm, right. Uh, yes, uh, I mean, clean energy is something that everyone's looking at, and legacy companies like Chevron are talking about clean energy. I mean, that's a, that's a big statement, actually, which conveys that we all are 
uh, concerned about uh, the world, the environment and the uh, generations to come. Uh, and talking about then how would you like them to you know know you what legacy what sort of you're the first head for Chevron in India uh, what kind of legacy are you uh, you know leaving going to leave for people to come follow you well Chevron has a rich history a big legacy we've been around for 146 years in India we are a startup um, we are starting from scratch so for me, two key priorities. One is to deliver high quality work, create a high performing team to build the trust and credibility within our company and externally. And uh, secondly, and very importantly, is to build a culture. And in a startup, you want to build the right culture up front. Uh, I want to build a culture that is collaborative and connected uh, and close knit so that our IT and digital folks, they work very closely with our domain experts. Uh, I would like our people to feel valued and respected. And then our name has the word innovation in it. And I would really like uh, our people at the engine to be inspired to innovate. So those are the two big things that I would like to focus on over the next few years. Right. Uh, you know, uh, it's very interesting when a company like Chevron, it's new center, and you say that, you know, it's like a startup. Uh, as of now, and I hear it across from GCC leaders to have that entrepreneurial uh, mindset so when you're driving this kind of a center. Akshay, it was a pleasure uh, to have you uh, with us here and talking to you. I wish you all the luck and uh, probably will uh, you know, meet more often. Thank you so much. Thank you, Saurav. It was really good meet meeting you and talking to you this morning. Thank you. Thanks.